Gamers, our power situation is quite literally dog shit. We're still using water wheels and they're just scattered everywhere. Next to my base, under my base, under our factory, under another factory. So it's time to upgrade to wind and steam power with some new massive wind turbines and steam engines and connect it all together in a new power plant building. And I'm kind of acting like it was my idea. Um, I've had heaps of comments requesting this, so credit where credit is due. Thank you for the ideas as always. To kick things off, we of course need to figure out a location. Ideally, it'd be nice if it was somewhere kind of close by, so uh, let's have a little quick look around. Okay, I think I've settled on a pretty good spot, and that is going to be right here. Obviously, uh, yeah, there's uh, a lot of water here at the moment, but uh, yeah, we're gonna have to, of course, just go ahead and fill this entire thing up with some dirt, and I feel like this is going to be uh, a pretty good location. It's also nice and close to uh, everything, so I'm gonna head back to base, grab a whole bunch of dirt to fill in all of that water, and uh, yeah, we're probably just going to get that done as a real quick time lapse, starting right now. Okay, and there we go. There's our area completely flattened off and ready to build on. I've also just gone ahead and grabbed a whole bunch of different blocks. I've got even more in our little toolbox as well, just a bunch more stone. Now, I do have a lot of stone and a lot of polished andesite because I do kind of want this building to be predominantly stone. I just, uh, you know, I feel like it's going to fit the vision I have for it. And uh, yeah, so let's just get started with the layout here. And so that's going to kind of be the width of the interior of the build. I think that's going to be a decent size. Uh, well, Hopefully. And now let's start figuring out like a nice little design for our side walls here. So I reckon we should keep with the theme of two block wide pillars. You know, we've pretty much used that everywhere else. And I'm just going to keep extending this down as far as I uh, kind of want to go, I guess. Okay, so I think that's a good length for the building there. And I just thought instead of actually raising these pillars up all the way, like how we normally would for each building, what if we actually have these as kind of like an outer layer and then we have the next layer be like the actual pillars. So let's grab out some scaffolding here and jump up the top. And let's just place some stairs on top of all of these. Well, actually, let's just do it with two to make sure this is actually going to look good first. Yeah, something kind of like that. I reckon that is going to look cool. So I think what I'm going to do next real quick is just uh, add these pillars onto every single side. Oh, uh, yeah, just uh, <laughs> give me a second. All right, so there's the design so far. I think that is actually looking really cool already. This is going to look awesome, dude. Next, we need to figure out how we want to actually tackle the walls in between these pillars, of course. So I think this is where our stone is going to come into play. Then let's go ahead and grab out our copycat steps. Let's maybe add some along the bottom and fill those with some andesite, uh, polished andesite, whatever it's called. Then maybe let's add some more here. And what we could actually do is maybe replace these top stone blocks with some more polished andesite. And that can be like our bottom wall there. I think that's looking cool. And then for the walls on like this kind of top section, we can actually just inset the walls once again with some more stone like this. We could even actually incorporate some windows in here as well. I think that would definitely look cool. Maybe something else that we could actually try is placing some polished andesite copycat panels in there. So maybe let's grab out some more copycat panels and just place some like so. And then just fill those in with some polished andesite. And yeah, that's looking pretty cool. Honestly, I think we could probably do with maybe a different block. Maybe like in this middle part and maybe on the bottom part. Maybe like some deep slate or something would actually kind of accentuate this look a little bit better. So let's go grab some deep slate real quick and uh, I'll just actually go ahead and add those in and we'll, uh, you know, we'll be right back. Alright, and there's the final wall design. I actually really really love the way this turned out. It looks absolutely awesome and like very like power plenty, I guess. So yeah, now I'm going to go ahead and actually just start, uh, you know, continue building this build probably just as a time lapse because honestly, I have no idea how I'm going to do this. Okay, before we start the time lapse, I've actually gone ahead and changed my mind on what blocks I want to use for our build here. Right now, it is just very uh, bland and stone. And so I've actually decided I want to go ahead and change the inner blocks here for the walls from stone to bricks. And so instead of actually just going around and mining a bunch of of clay, like I've done previously, uh, I've actually figured out that, you know, we can get clay. If we actually wash sand, we have a 25% chance to get a clay ball. And to make sand, we can actually get that from gravel if we put it through some crushing wheels. So I've got a bunch of gravel. We're going to head into our little factory here, head over to our phallic uh, little setup here and just place in a bunch of gravel. And then once that's processed, we should, yes, and we actually do have a very small chance to get clay from this uh, process here, which is pretty nice. And then, so yeah, once we've got all of our sand process, we can head over to our washing station over here. We can place our sand in here, and then once it's washed, we can, uh, yeah, we'll get a, well, a very
very small amount of clay. And so I'm just going to get all of that done and we'll resume with the time lapse of, uh, you know, replacing those stone blocks to bricks and then we'll continue building the rest of the factory as well. So yeah, let's get started. Firstly, I began replacing the stone with bricks. However, I did leave a gap here, which will be for our steam engines. Don't worry. I then headed over to the opposite side and began adding in the walls here too. Next, it was onto the roof. Right now, the overall build is looking quite short and I wanted to add some extra height with a bunch of various designs. So I added a big tower in the middle and some shorter ones on the sides. Then it was onto filling in the back wall with similar designs to the sides we already have built. And then for the front, I built a short little design, kind of like a house, I guess, for the entrance of the power plant. I then finished it all off with a door and some neat little extra details. Okay, and there we go. There's our power plant building all completed, except for these two walls once again. Ah, uh, yeah, just don't worry about that for now. And so the actual first power thing that I want to work on is not going to be inside here. It's going to be on the outside, actually. And that's going to be our massive wind turbine. Starting with the first one, let's just go with uh, right here. Let's make the base a nice sturdy three by three. And uh, of course, I don't have a crafting table. I need bloody stairs, mate. God uh, damn it. Okay, I'm back with some stairs. Let's raise this whole thing up an additional block like so. And then I think for the actual main like kind of pillar of the wind turbine, I guess, is going to be this kind of shape. And so I wanted to actually add our stairs in here just to make that transition between the base and uh, the stem, I guess, uh, a little bit more nicer. And so, yeah, I'm just going to go ahead and raise this up to uh, a, a decent height. Okay, and now from here, we're going to make the kind of like head of the actual windmill part. So let's add some stairs on the sides here. And then for the sides, let's just fill these in and then we'll add some more stairs on top here. So yeah, there we go. That's kind of like the, uh, I don't know what it's called, but it's like the head of the thing. And we're going to have the windmill kind of, uh, you know, on this plane here. Now we're going to grab one of our windmill bearings. We're going to place that bad boy right here. Next, let's grab out our wool and just make like a uh, kind of a T or not T shape, but like a plus shape like this. Then I want to grab out my, uh, where are they? These things, windmill sails. And these are going to make up kind of the bulk of our actual, uh, you know, thing. So I want to make these quite large. Yeah, so I think that's a decent height. So let's add that onto each side and see how it's looking so far. All right, so there it is so far. Uh, it's coming along nicely, but these are definitely, uh, yeah, they're way too thin. They look like they're going to break off in like a second of this thing actually being powered. So let's head back up there and kind of figure out what we need to do. All right, I reckon if we just add another like second layer here, just to bulk it up a little bit, Bit. And let's maybe make it go like halfway up, like around there, I guess. And now with these all done, it kind of looks like these aren't really being supported. So I think what could look nice is actually maybe adding a copycat step in there. So let's grab our scaffolding and just place one in there. And let's just place some wool in that. And yeah, I think that'll look nice. Kind of like a little like extra support for that area, I guess. And yeah, dude, that is looking a whole lot better. It actually looks like a windmill now, which is awesome. Now I did of course forget my super glue before. And so yeah, we actually need to super glue these sections together here in order for the windmill bearing to actually work. So now let's jump in here. We're going to remove this block and we should be able to now just start, uh, you know, power it on. And hell yeah, dude, that should be generating some good power. Look at that, 3,500 stress units. Honestly, I don't know if that's good or not, but uh, I, well, I mean, I hope it is. And now it is time to actually relay this power through our little pole here. So I actually made sure to leave this hollow so that we can add a shaft and also some belt. So let's place a shaft here. Then we're going to place the start of our belt right here. And then we're going to go ahead and jump back down. We're going to bring this belt all the way down here. We'll probably go underground too. Hopefully it's going to reach. Yes, it is. And bang, there's our belt. There's our power being relayed from our massive windmill all the way up there and down through here. And then we're going to be able to actually route this into our factory and link it up with our uh, steam engine eventually. So now with this whole windmill done, I'm going to go ahead and just make an additional two kind of in this area. So yeah, I'm just going to uh, do that as a very quick time lapse right now. Okay, gamers, there is our three windmills all finished and all added in. I also just went ahead and linked all of the power up and we've got that coming in through here. I mean, I'll just head inside so you can actually see it. What the hell? Where did my door go? My door is just gone. Hello? 
Yeah, there it is. It's coming in through here, and we'll be able to use this to power, you know, all of our stuff that we're going to be needing for our steam engines. First of which, we're going to be needing some of these fluid tanks, because we need something to hold the water that we need to, of course, heat up for the steam power. And so I plan on adding these on the sides of the buildings here. So let's go ahead and just re remove, uh, you know, these entire walls, because they're, of course, just going to be replaced with some fluid tanks instead. Okay, there's our walls removed. Let's go ahead and start adding our tanks in. So these are going to be in a 3x3 three three shape shape like this and then we're just going to you know extend this up uh pretty high maybe like yeah one block past the actual top hip will probably look nice let's jump back down to the other side and add in this one as well and i oh my god you're kidding me i put it in the wrong spot <laughs> Okay, and there's our tanks added in, and while they do look nice, I feel like they, uh, I don't know, they just don't look secure enough. So let's go ahead and just place some copycat panels around the sides here. And now I don't know if I want to leave them like that, or if I want to have andesite inside of those. I think, I think I'll leave them with the andesite. I think I like that more, to be honest. So yeah, I'm going to add a strap there, up the top, and probably somewhere in the middle, and uh, yeah, I'll get that done and be right back. Okay, and there we go. There's the final design for the water tanks all done. Now it's time to head on inside and convert these tanks into some steam engines. And to do that, all we need to do is just grab our eight steam engine blocks that I went and pre-prepared before. And all we have to do is just add one on top of, uh, you know, one of these tanks here, and that converts it into a boiler or a steam... Well, yeah, that's a boiler. These are the steam engines. And so the configuration I want to go with is going to be four on each tank. I don't exactly know if this is the best layout or not, but um, we're just going to stick with it. And then we're also going to go ahead and place some shafts on top of these to make these into the actual, uh, you know, things that'll turn as this gets, uh, you know, steam in it. And there we go. There's our steam engine set up. Next up, we of course need a way to get water inside of these. And for that, we can head back over to my chest full of uh, nice little trinkets and machinery. And so, yeah, we're going to have to go ahead and make an infinite water source somewhere. I'm I'm guessing probably in here is going to be kind of the best spot. So let's place some water like so. Oh, how are we going to do this, eh? This might be kind of hard, actually. I didn't leave a lot of gap between these, so... <laughs> okay, so yeah, let's actually go ahead and make our infinite water sources on... Uh, each side here. Let's grab out one of our fluid pipes. We're going to place that there, and then we're going to arch it around and into the side of our boiler here. We're going to right-click this to turn it the other way. Then, of course, we need to get this powered in order for it to work. So, let's go ahead and actually grab our uh, power from here from the windmills. Oh, I don't have any gearboxes. Oh my god. Okay, give me a second. I'm going to grab some gearboxes. Okay, I'm back with a whole bunch of gearboxes. What I actually want to do before we kind of bring this up to the surface is actually add a speed controller in front of this. And uh, yeah, you guys have basically been raving on at me about not using these. So we're starting to finally use these now. So basically, these are going to eliminate the need for the whole gear ratio stuff that we've been doing. And it's all just going to do it in this neat little box here. So basically, we can hold right click on the side of this and just set our freaking RPM that we want. We can go as high as 256. Look at, geez, okay, uh, that's a bit too much. I don't know, 64 might be good enough. Let's just stay with that. And so now with that done, we can go ahead and take our power from this thing here and go across to here. Let's grab a gear box, a vertical gearbox uh, specifically. Let's go up, and then we're going to slap our cogwheel onto that, and that should be powering our pump and sucking water up. If we right-click the side of this here, we can change it to a window one and see that our water is actually going in, and we can see that our water little bar is now filling up. If I actually remove all of these steam engines, we'll be able to see the water going in. There we go. Look at that. Hell yeah, it's filling up. Okay, before we get stuff powered, let's uh, let's go ahead and actually place some more of the things down that we're going to be needing. Specifically under here, we're going to need the blaze burners that I need to go grab from the chest. These bad boys. So we're going to have nine of these in total underneath each of our boilers. There we go. There's our other nine added in. Oh, and we're actually we're already getting power from this as well. Just from the passive heat from these, I'm making our boilers run, although very slowly. You might see 2,000 stress units. That's not very much for a steam engine of this size at least. So so let's relay this up. We might just go up to here. We're going to bring our power over this way. And that way, whenever we need to power something, we can kind of just branch off of this if we need to. And yeah, there we go. Our steam engines are now getting powered, which is pretty nice. So next, we're going to go ahead and grab out some extra stuff. Specifically, our mechanical arms here. These are going to go right here, I believe. <laughs> We're going to be adding our mechanical arms in here and also here on this side, of course. And these are going to be feeding lava buckets into these bad boys to get them running even faster than they already are. And to get those lava buckets, we're of course going to need to set up a lava dripstone farm, which I plan on adding up here above the steam engines here. Okay, so let's go ahead and grab out our dripstone and our cauldrons as well. And so up here, I actually want to make like sort of a catwalk thing that our cauldrons are going to be situated on. Let's place our first one in here. We're going to extend this all the way down to the other side. And then we're 
are of course going to add another one on that side as well. But first, I actually want to link up a bit of a staircase up here. It's going to be hard to line it up, definitely. Yeah, okay. Just give me a minute. Okay, there we go. There's our staircase added in. Now we have this nice platform to work with. Let's go ahead and add in all of our dripstone. Okay, and I just realized this whole platform is for nothing because we need to place the cauldrons here and then pipes below them. Yeah, I'm uh, I'm a bit of an idiot. But uh, yeah, the whole idea is basically we're going to be adding our cauldrons under here. We're also going to place a whole bunch of lava source blocks on top of these to, of course, get these, uh, you know, build up with lava. I'm going to figure out all of that and the platforms and the staircase. Uh, yeah, so just once again, give me a second. All right, gamers, I'm back with a Canadian club with coke in hand. Oh, it's good shit, mate. Because it's time to get started with the fucking technical dog shit, okay? Sorry, I don't know what's come out of me in the last, uh, like, half an hour. But, um, yeah, we're just gonna roll with it, okay? So, yeah, we've got the lava dripstone farm set up. Of course, we, uh, you know, we don't obviously have enough lava yet. I'm going to fill that up as we go, as we get more lava in these. Like, that one over there. I don't want to grab that. Ooh. Got one here too. Fuck yeah, mate. And so yeah, basically we need to set up a system that's going to harvest the lava, put it into buckets, give it to this, and then give it back and then fill it up. You know what I'm saying? If you don't understand, uh, you will in a second because we're going to be setting all of this crap up right now. Actually, we could probably set this up without even having any belts. Okay, I just had an idea because I did kind of sketch this out in creative mode beforehand, but we might actually be able to do this like way better. Basically, we need to have our arm here grab lava buckets, probably from this, and then we needed to put the empty buckets back into something and I think we could do something like this, actually. If we have a funnel set up like this... Okay, I might need to shift this back one. Okay, I think this is actually going to work, and this is... Yeah, this is going to be kind of goaded, actually. All right, so we're going to bring our pipes here from our lava down, and we're going to feed this into a spout. This spout is going to fill up any empty buckets that we have on here. Uh, we actually need to change that out for a pump. And so basically, our arm here is going to grab the lava bucket. It's going to put that lava into one of these bad boys, and then we want it to put that empty bucket now back into here. So if we set this brass filter to a bucket. Our arm should put it through here, and then it should go onto here, and then from here, it'll feed out and go onto our other depot to be filled up by lava, in theory. Uh, yeah, hopefully that's gonna work. I guess we can actually just go ahead and test it. All we need to do is power this, uh, pump here, so let's actually go back and grab our shafts and stuff, and then we need to figure out how to get that powered. Okay, we might actually have to move this all back one again. Really hope our arm is actually going to be able to reach this. Let's just test it real quick. If we grab our arm, if we place our depot down, right-click our arm to deposit items. Yes, okay, it does reach there. Sweet. Thank God for that. Because, yeah, we're going to need all of the room we can get here. Let's slap our pump back on. Let's grab our spout. We're going to place that there. <laughs> Oh my god. Okay, now to get power to this, we need to grab out our gearbox. Let's put it there. We're going to change it into a vertical gearbox, and we're going to do that. I'm sure there's probably a better way of doing it, but uh, yeah. So this is going to suck lava into this. Like so, we just probably harvested some from the thing up above. And now we can actually test if this is going to work. If we grab our mechanical arm here, we're going to head down here. We're going to right click all of these blaze burners to set them to deposit items. We're going to set this to also deposit items, our empty buckets. And then we're going to set this to take items. This is going to be our actual filled lava buckets. Then if we go ahead and place this bad boy right here. Um, okay, it's a bit of a ghetto setup at the moment. Uh, just don't worry about it, but it is working. It's powering everything. It's put the bucket back in. And yes, it is grabbing the lava bucket. Dude, it's working perfectly. I just got goosebumps. Holy mother of God. Okay, it's not working perfectly. It is grabbing empty buckets. Uh, I don't know if that's going to really be that much of an issue. Actually, a uh, one way that we might be able to fix that is have a brass depot here. A brass funnel, sorry. And if we set that to be a filter of lava buckets and then have that go onto another depot down here. Oh my God, this is a, a little bit of a weird setup. I'm sure there's probably a better way of doing this. And then we reset our little arm thing here to take from this instead. I think this is going to be perfect. Let's uh, let's just relink everything and place it back down. Okay, so deposit there and then pick up items from here. Bang. Let's place our lava bucket back on there. It's going to power one of those. Put the bucket back in. Once that gets filled up, it's going to go down there. And then this is going to cycle the whole freaking thing back again. And it's not going to pick it up from here, even though it's empty. That, yes, dude, that is perfect. It might not be the best setup, but uh, dude, I'm happy with it. It works. And so now if we compare our two boilers, as you can see, this one is, yeah, it's spinning quite a bit faster than this one. This one's just passive heat at the moment. It's outputting 2,048. If we look at this one, 49,000. Oh my god. And that's not even with all of these powered, I'm pretty sure. Yeah, you can see the back ones there are powered, but these four aren't even powered yet, because we obviously aren't producing enough lava yet. But yeah, that's the basic idea of the steam engines, you know, the basic setup pretty much done. I, of course, need to now repeat this on the other side over here. So I'm going to work on that right now. I'm also going to hopefully get most of our lava dripstone farms... 
God, what am I doing? Uh, all figured out and all filled up with lava here. And so yeah, just give me a second and I should be right back with all of that set up. Oh, all right. And there it is all set up and running at full capacity. Each of our steam engines here are running at a whole whopping 147,400 stress units. Look at that. Just for comparison, one of our wind turbines is running at 3,500. So just one of those steam engines is literally like, I don't know, the equivalent of like 30 of these or something. Uh, dude, that's actually kind of crazy. I, I didn't realize steam engines were actually that powerful, dude. That should be more than enough power to power literally, like, all of our factories, plus I don't even know how many more. I actually want to see how much power a water wheel outputs as well, just for comparison's sake. Oh my god, 512. Dude, that is nuts. Yeah, 512 per one water wheel, and that takes up that much space? That is insane, dude. I had so many comments of you guys telling me to use steam engines, and uh, yeah, I'm, I'm very glad we finally got around to doing it. Okay, and so now the time has come to actually link these all together, and I actually want to hook these up to our speed controller over here, and then have all of that output into some power lines. So let's actually go outside first and figure out where we want our power lines to start from. All right, I reckon probably from here might be a pretty good spot. So let's go ahead and start a power pole right here. Let's just raise this up to a decent height, and then we might just have like kind of little sides here that'll hold the actual shafts to look like power poles, I guess. And so these are going to come out of the building right here. Of course, I'm one block too far away. There we go. And then they'll kind of rest upon the actual power pole like this. Now, I think another way to make it look a little bit more contained is just to have some copycat steps up here. Let's, of course, fill those in with some polished andesite as well. And bang, there we go. There's our power pole design. That is looking pretty cool. Hell yeah. Okay, now it's time to actually get that hooked up to our windmills and our steam engines. Okay, so obviously we have our windmill power here here, and then we also have our steam engine power here, and this one is faster than this one. Honestly, I have no idea how I'm gonna do this. Okay, first, let's get these connected up to the same line, and we can't really do it like that. Actually, we can do it with these, the encased chain drives, like this, bang and bang. Now they're connected up, we can take power off of one of these, like so, and there we go. It's all combined up. Okay, and we're back, and I've also decided I'm going to move this down to the ground, just to make it look a little nicer, and bang, there we go. Okay, now now, what we should be able to go ahead and do, place this. Okay, uh, maybe not. Um, okay. Actually, wait, can we, does that mean we can just do that? Yeah, okay, I think that'll work. So we actually didn't need that whole freaking one. Oh my god, dude. They are such a pain in the ass to make as well. Oh my god. Well, um, that's okay. We're gonna set this up to 128. I think that's a decent speed. Let's grab our large cog wheel. We're gonna place it in there. And vertical gearbox. Okay, now we should be able to just connect these up like so. There we go. Now we can pretty this up by placing some andesite casings there so that our uh, glass panes will actually connect back up and that'll be, you know, a full wall. But yeah, there we go. Our power poles are now fully connected. Our power is outputting from our windmills and our steam turbines as well. Or steam engines, I should probably call them. And yeah, there it is. We now have power outputting from our brand new power plant. And now all that's left to do with this is uh, just make a whole bunch more of these power poles around the place. And then we can finally use it to connect every everything up in our industrial city over there. Oh, dude, that's actually metal. Our train ran over a creeper, hell yeah. <laughs> and so yeah, I'm just gonna start building all of that uh, right now. Alright, and there we go. There's our power lines all added in all the way over from our power station over to our main industrial city. Now, I will definitely be using all of this power for our future buildings we're going to be adding in and for pretty much every other building that we're going to be, you know, adding uh, elsewhere as well. But yeah, I'm really happy with the way this turned out. It actually looks like like power lines, which is pretty cool, other than the fact that, you know, they're like spinning. Uh, <laughs> but that's okay. It adds a little bit of extra visual interest to the area. And uh, yeah, I think it turned out really awesome. And now it's time to get into your guys' ideas from the previous episode. And right off the bat, uh, you guys did not hesitate on ripping into my epic belt design. Honestly, I think it's uh, a technical marvel. But uh, yeah, you guys definitely pointed out that I could have done this in uh, a, a way better way. Instead of just having these being sorted here, I could have just put them, you know, in front of each belt. I honestly, I don't know why I didn't think of that. So let's go ahead and uh, just remove everything. 
All right, then, now that we have a clean slate to work with, let's get on actually, uh, you know, making this way better than it was before. So first off, we're going to bring this belt all the way down to the end here. And now instead of having all of our brass tunnels right here, we're going to just simply put these in front of every single section that we want to, you know, kind of branch the item off of. And then we just simply need to add belts in front of all of these to connect them up to our actual vaults here. We also have a load from the train here ready to go as well, so we can test it out. First, we do need to get everything powered, of course, which should be pretty easy. We just link all of these up together together and another gearbox and bang everything is powered and that is quite literally it that's the setup done I honestly I don't know how I didn't think of that in the beginning um now we can go ahead and just throw all of our wood on here and watch it get sorted nicely uh well hopefully yeah there we go it's all going into the correct spots that is awesome all right the next idea that a couple of you guys commented on was for the nether portal and to go ahead and add some fluids inside of these tanks which I did actually want to do in that episode however I was uh, definitely running out of time I was uh, cutting it a bit close to the wire uh, with releasing that episode in time. So I'm glad we can actually come back to this and uh, improve it a little bit. And so to get these filled with lava, of course, we can't uh, manually place water buckets inside of these, which is kind of annoying. And plus it would take forever. Each bucket is 1000 MB. I don't know what MB is. Uh, so that means, you know, 64 buckets for each of those plus those. Uh, it's going to take forever. So instead, we're going to set up a little dripstone lava farm. Let's just go ahead and put this in the side of the mountain here, like so. Then we can place our dripstones in there and of course start adding our lava buckets in. Oops, that is not lava. Um, rest in peace to that lantern. Uh, please don't overflow. Oh my god. Okay, there we go. So now these cauldrons will be infinitely just filling up with lava constantly. Now let's go ahead and grab some fluid pipes. We're going to connect all of those up and then we of course also need a pump to get this flowing. So let's go with right there. We're going to face that the right way and uh, we do need to get that powered. And so well, obviously we have our two water wheels here. We can probably just uh, drag power from one of these. Uh, let's... Oh, dude, that was perfect. Hell yeah. Now this is going to be very slow without a uh, at least a little bit of gear ratioing so let's get that sorted Okay, and that should be pretty quick now. Next, let's go ahead and grab the rest of our fluid pipes and we're gonna connect all of these up at the top here. Now, I don't know which style I'm going to like more. So let's, if we make these windowed like that, then I think we'll actually be able to get what I was wanting. Hell yeah. Yes, dude, that looks awesome. I think I like that more than that one. So yeah, let's go with that. Oh, I just got an achievement for doing nothing. What the hell? This shouldn't have worked. Hidden achievement, magma wheel. What the hell is that? Oh God. Uh, oh, okay, that's, um, that's what happened. <laughs> Obviously, a cauldron got filled with lava, and I didn't have a pipe to, uh, you know, connect it to. That, that makes sense. Okay, <laughs> well, we got a hidden achievement that I didn't even mean to get, which is pretty cool. Let's do the same with all the pipes over on this side, like so, and then let's connect that up, and then we'll hook up this side as well, and of course, I have run out of goddamn pipes. Oh my god. Um, I'll be back in a second. Okay, and let's just connect that up like so, and hell yeah, these should be filling up with lava relatively uh, slowly, actually, but uh, yeah, I actually think that looks really cool with that addition there. Have we even actually, okay, we do have a little bit of lava in there. That's pretty cool. Another Another idea in one of those comments was just to add some like general pipe kind of decorations coming out the sides and stuff, which I definitely think would look awesome. So let's just have some pipes kind of branching off the sides. Dude, that looks so much better now with those little extra details. That actually looks awesome, dude. Thank you so much for the idea for that. Okay, the next idea is actually uh, my own idea. And it's just because I was running past and noticed that there is absolutely no grass on this because obviously it was once water and I put grass here. So let's uh, crack out the bone mill and start beautifying this whole landscape. And hell yeah, that is looking so much better than just, uh, you know, the previous flat grass. The next idea a couple of you guys had was to actually make our little crane decoration here, you know, articulate and uh, move around, which I think would definitely be awesome. One of the comments did suggest to use a sequenced gear shift, which will actually allow us to kind of program the movements and, uh, you know, make it move how we want it to. And we're going to need that because I don't want it to, you know, clip through our new power pole here because that would definitely just go straight through it. So I think having it move like from here and like around around this way and then just kind of back and forth would be awesome. So the first thing we need to do is head under here and right here we need to place a mechanical bearing. But first we actually need to get power under here and I did think of branching off our power lines but I think it's going to look kind of ugly. And uh, so yeah, we do actually have an underground uh, belt that's running I think maybe around about here somewhere. Let's just dig down and uh, try and find it I guess. There it is, okay. So yeah, we should be, oh dude, it's, <laughs> it's literally right next to it. What are the chances of that? Oh my God. Well, that makes life 
life a whole lot easier with this. Holy crap. Let's just grab a gearbox. We're going to branch that over. We actually need a vertical gearbox. Bang. That is way too fast. Uh, let's actually go ahead and grab our speed controller that we have here. And we're going to set this to be very low. How can we set this up to be easier? Let's go maybe like that and then large cogwheel. There we go. Okay. Next, we need to actually pause that because we need to glue everything together. But before, yeah, before we actually do all that, let's just glue. So from there to there just to test it out and let's attach it and yes thank god it does work that is awesome now actually before we go into this we do need the thing i was talking about before the sequence the gear shift let's plug that in here and then we should be able to right click this and we're greeted with like a little bit of a menu here turn by angle okay let's just test this out let's go with uh 45 degrees and so we do need to give this power for it to actually do its thing which is kind of annoying to be honest i wanted it to just endlessly loop but that's okay okay so it's rotating to the right um how do we get it to rotate the other way i'm guessing by just having it rotate the other way okay there we go this should now hopefully rotate the other direction let's test it out yes it does it goes to the left okay sweet so yeah we do need to set up a redstone uh timer with this okay let's power this up and see how it goes okay it keeps getting powered but it's not rotating back so I think that should just be fine hopefully okay everything is now glued together let's power up our bearing and bang there we go it's rotating hell yeah that is actually so cool that looks awesome dude now I don't exactly know what this is doing uh, I thought it was supposed to reset every time it gets power so yeah I don't know how that works we're just gonna we're honestly just gonna leave it and let it do its thing and so once it gets to there is it just going to snap back into place okay no it's just gonna keep rotating uh, what the hell? Why? That is not what I told it to do. Let's set that to 180 and see what it does. Yeah, okay, I'm, I'm confused. Uh, you guys can tell me how that works and how I can get it to do what I want it to do. I just want it to rotate around here and then go back and then just keep looping that. So yeah, you guys tell me how to do that, okay? <laughs> but yeah, once again, thank you so much for the idea. I really love this. Uh, even though, you know, it just, uh, stops and keeps going. Oh my god, dude. What? Tell me how to fix this, please. I'll fix it in the next episode. <laughs> Alright, and so with all of that done, that just about does it for this episode. If you want to download the entire power plant with the steam engines and the wind turbines, be sure to check out my Patreon page for the download. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.